Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we're starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Not really a uh, picture perfect forecast right here. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for what you need to know before you start your day. Good morning. It is six o'clock this Sunday. It is May 7th, the day after Election Day. Thank you so Good much morning. for joining us. I tried the American flag outfit today. Did it work? Mm. All right. <laughs> Not exactly. One of us had to look patriotic <laughs> after like six hours of the coronation yesterday. I was like, hey, it's Election Day, too. We're going to be covering that and so much that happened in and around our city overnight. But yesterday you made it out to the Botanical Gardens. Yeah, it was it was gorgeous. But Sarah, uh, like how you're describing today, like that kind of dodge and duck, like yeah. it got really, really dark and cloudy, but then the sun was out. Right. And then, like, I could tell it was raining in the distance. Yeah, today we're going to be dodging a few more downpours as well. Well, here's a look at the radar right now. You can see that some showers have really started to develop out southwest of San Antonio uh, toward Eagle Pass, even some thunderstorm activity, a few rumbles of thunder out near Yavaldi as well. There was even some smaller hail down near Canipa. But as we take a closer view around San Antonio, you can see really what we're dealing with is just some light rain at the moment in spots. We're going to be dodging downpours today. That's the best way to describe the weather. It is not going to be a washout by any means, but there will be times where you may see an isolated shower or two, or at least a passing shower or two. Here's how it breaks down as far as coverage goes. Highest coverage this morning, about 40%. And then in the afternoon, we'll be just be watching the radar carefully for a couple of isolated thunder showers as well. So looking at your forecast for the day today, scattered showers and even a few rumbles of thunder early this morning. Only a 30% chance during the daytime as far as coverage is concerned. It is going to stay pretty cloudy though today. Hard for us to see sun. 88 though for the high. We'll have southeast winds breezy gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. A more in-depth look at the radar coming up in just a bit. And I'll tell you about a pretty messy forecast over the next several days. Max. Thank you, Sarah. So Prop A was one of the main draws for the city elections in San Antonio. In fact, numbers show it was the main draw. More people cast an early ballot in the Prop A race than those who voted for mayor. And here are the results. An overwhelming <laughs> majority, bless you, 72% of voters shooting down Prop A. Garrett Berenger has the breakdown from last night. From the early results alone, it was clear that Proposition A was going down. So it made for an easy night at the main opposition watch party. The Justice Charter, as supporters called it, aimed to decriminalize marijuana possession and abortion, expand the city's site and release program, create a new justice director position, and embed bans on chokeholds and no-knock warrants in the charter. But several city council members came out against it, and the city attorney said most of it wasn't even enforceable. Sight and release in particular became a focus since the change would largely mandate officers sight instead of arresting people for certain offenses, whereas they now have more discretion. Opponents in the police union and business community claim that would lead to more crime, which struck a chord with voters. You know, and in, in, in mentioning to people, no one has a right to take your stuff, right? Uh, and I've said this before as kids, we were taught not to lie, cheat, or steal. The, this proposition allowed some of that, and, and that's just not right for the community, the business community. Both sides accused the other of misleading voters or misinformation, and a police union control pack pumped more than $1.8 into the race. The head of Act for SA, which led the campaign to get Prop A onto the ballot, blamed the size of their loss on the amount of money the union and others had spent fighting it. She said she did not regret pulling all of the issues on the same proposition. And while this went down hard, she does expect more initiatives like this in the future. GMSA, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, it was an emotional night for Mayor Ron Nirenberg and his family as he became one of the longest serving mayors in the city. Nirenberg beat out eight other candidates in his last bid for mayor of the seventh largest city in the U.S. Patty Santos tells us there were a lot of tears during his celebration last night. The mayor saying he was really humbled during this uh, race. He says he did not take his campaigning or this race lightly. He didn't take it for granted. He says he's just grateful for the voters who decided to vote for him once again. The celebration was loud, but emotions were high. Mayor Ron Nuremberg is one of the few mayors to be elected into term limits. In total, he served the city 10 years, including his time as councilman. His big push has been affordable housing, fighting economic inequality, and 
job creation. I'm very uh, happy um, to be mayor of San Antonio at a time when San Antonians together have rallied to finally break the cycles of generational poverty that have gripped the city for a very long time. That's done through education, that's done through good jobs, good paying jobs, creating those jobs, that's done through housing opportunity. We're doing all that work. And he was asked what he is thinking beyond the next two years, and he tells us he's not allowing himself to think beyond the next two years. He's just here to get the job done as mayor. For GMSA, I'm Patty Santos. And those are just a couple of the big races that we are following this morning. Keep it right here for continued coverage on everything you need to know. And you can also find the latest on KSAT.com on our homepage. You can find it all, including the bonds that passed for some of the local school districts. All right, time now just about 6.06, 74 degrees out. Still ahead, our election coverage continues with the spotlight of the District 2 Council City race for who could represent the east side. And after the break, a deadly mass shooting in North Texas. Eight people and the gunman now dead. What investigators are saying this morning in the aftermath of this latest tragedy. 74 degrees at 606. It's another kind of humid one out there. And dodging downpours is the hashtag we're using this morning. Sarah Spivey, she'll explain when we come back. This morning, eight people are dead after police say a gunman opened fire in an outlet out, outlet mall in Allen, Texas. That's near Dallas. All right, so right now, seven people, along with those who were shot and killed, seven more people are in the hospital, three of them in critical condition. Allen police say that one of their officers shot and killed the gunman. However, police are still investigating, trying to figure out why anyone would ever do this. Now, the name of the gunman and victims have not yet been released. Here in San Antonio, a man was shot by a police officer during a standoff on the far northeast side and has been taken to the hospital. It happened around 9.30 last night on Knoll Hollow near Bulverde Road in Loop 1604. The police chief says the neighbor threatened another neighbor with a gun. That 22-year-old man kept going in and out of a home while officers were writing their report. They say that man came out with a gun and eventually pointed it at the officers. That's when an officer shot the man in the shoulder. The 22-year-old was taken to a hospital. A 27-year veteran of the force is on administrative leave while the case is being investigated. And of course, one of the biggest stories locally this morning, election results. Our election coverage continues on KSAT.com. In case you missed it, one of my favorite things that we do here at KSAT, Steve Spreester hosting an election night live stream, speaking to an expert panel live. They went through the results and featured real-time reaction and analysis. We have the latest on the mayor race, city council, Prop A, and the various school bonds. Just head to KSAT.com. You can find the story on the homepage. You can also find our forecast, which yesterday you said kind of dodging showers. Yeah, and Sarah, same today. 
Yeah, and we're actually starting off with a little bit more rain on the radar than yesterday. Take a look at the radar right now. Most of this is, is elevated, meaning that some of it is making it to the ground and other parts we're seeing just some light sprinkles, especially around San Antonio right now, just some light sprinkles around the area as I zoom into the county here, especially on the west side near SeaWorld, down near uh, Lackland Air Force Base, JVSA Lackland. You can see there's some light rain occurring there. Also off near Hondo and Sabinal, but we do have uh, some more robust thunderstorms at the moment down near Eagle Pass. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the radar that is closer to Eagle Pass and nearer to the border. You can see quite a bit of lightning strikes here with this storm system. It's generally moving to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour. So let's say that this system can hold together before it makes it to Uvalde. It should be at the Uvalde area. Uh, let's get an ETA on that. If you're in Uvalde, that storm system, it's broken, it's scattered, but it should be near you by about 8 o'clock this morning. Again, that's just one example of some of the more robust storms uh, that we're seeing. We uh, briefly saw a severe thunderstorm warning out near Canipa. I'll go ahead and push play on here and you can see how quickly that storm ended up falling apart before it moved into Medina County. I say all of this to say that our theme, especially for this morning, is going to be dodging downpours, meaning not everybody is going to see some rain, but there is going to be some rain on the radar, especially during the morning hours here and even potentially in the afternoon. Floresville, you're getting a quick uh, isolated shower right now as well. So. Coverage is not going to be widespread. It's not going to be 60 to 80% coverage, but we are looking at about 40% through early this morning. And then into the afternoon, we could see another round of isolated showers. Don't pay attention exactly where this potential uh, computer model puts the rain. It just shows you that there's going to be some rain on the radar in the afternoon, about 30% coverage. Do not cancel your outdoor plans today. Just make sure to have a, a place to quickly duck inside, wait for the passing shower to move through, and he should be just fine. Uh, otherwise, late tonight out near the border, there could be another round of thunderstorms, but this one is likely to not make it towards San Antonio. Most of the robust rain today will be up near the Dallas-Fort Worth area and along I-35 from Waco to Dallas. That's where there's a risk for some uh, significant severe weather later on today. Otherwise, the biggest thing you'll notice are the clouds and the humidity during the day today. Currently, it's cloudy at the airport and 74 degrees. Winds are from the east and uh, northeast at about five miles per hour, and here's that humidity. Dew points are in the 70s. That is at the top of the scale. Nasty humidity outside feels like a wall of water. Temperatures close to those dew points. Del Rio is already starting at 80 degrees this morning. 76 in Pleasanton. Kerrville, you're at 73 and 74 in New Braunfels. Let me take you through that KSAT 12-hour forecast. This is for San Antonio. Again, notice 40% chance for a few thunder showers through this morning after after about 10, that goes down a little bit to about 30% coverage. Around noon, it'll be 80 degrees. And in the afternoon, still very cloudy, 88 for the high this afternoon in San Antonio. But elsewhere, we'll be looking at 95 in Del Rio and Eagle Pass, 96 in Carissa Springs, near to 100 down near Catula and Laredo, 86 in Kerrville, 85 in Canyon Lake, so the mid-80s across the hill country, upper 80s around the San Antonio metro area. Showing you the weather setup because I want to put this in perspective for for you. We are going to be in, in a pretty messy weather pattern over the coming days. What do I mean by that? Take a look at the upper level winds. You see these squiggles right here? They're called short waves in the atmosphere. They're not really good rainmakers, but they do provide us with a little bit of energy to produce random thunderstorms. It's not like this low pressure system, which produced a good complex through the Dallas area. This is more random in nature. So as we look at your seven day forecast, what you see is daily a chance for an isolated shower or storm. Not everybody is going to see rain every single day, but there is a chance for rain every single day and the coverage will only be 20 to 30 percent until next weekend. It does look like we'll have more robust rain chances on Saturday. Otherwise, every single day, the thing that will affect you is the humidity. It is going to be humid every single day. The atmosphere is going to look like it wants to rain. It's just luck of the draw if you end up seeing a shower or storm. Ugh, I hate seeing that heat index at 100. Yeah, that's the way it's going to feel tomorrow.
Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> 617. You said that so kindly. <laughs> 74 degrees and humid out. Just ahead, our election coverage continues with the spotlight of the District 2 City Council race. Why this district could see its first re-elected candidate in 10 years. All right, we're continuing our election coverage this morning, and here you go, District 2 Count City Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez gliding to victory, securing a second term in office. As Dylan Collier reports, that's a significant accomplishment considering the recent history of this East Side District. McKee Rodriguez became the first council person re-elected in District 2 in over a decade and did so without having to go to a runoff. He is an elected official who thrives on being polarizing and has really leaned into that approach. The former math teacher said his career as an educator guided him during his first term in office and will continue to do so. I think about every decision that I make on the dais and how is it going to affect my students and my students who struggled to come to class or when they were in class they were struggling. McKee Rodriguez declared victory just after 930 as he thanked his supporters saying the stability of a second term or even a third or fourth term will help improve the lives of people living on the east side. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. And we have full election results right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, just about 622, 74 degrees now. Let's take a look at the outside of the road, see if there's any incidents or closures you need to know about. Right now, we're not seeing anything popping up on Transguide. If we do, we'll let you know about them. Now to a couple KSAC community events you need to know about. In a couple of weeks, you're invited to a health and wellness conference. It's happening May 18th and 19th at the Norris Conference Center. There will be more than 15 workshops and resources related to mental health and wellness. And the two-day workshop is free and open to families and professionals. All right, you still have time, too, to donate a shoebox of essentials for those in need. The United Way of San Antonio and Bear County's shoebox project. Well, they hope to collect 10,000 shoeboxes full of these essentials. All of these will be donated to the vulnerable populations here in the Alamo City. You still have time. The drive ends on May 26th. If you have any questions, what to donate, how, where, give all that information, how you can step up and help out, just head to KSAT.com. Time now, just about 626, 74 degrees out. Still headed 630, a drag show in New Braunfels brought hundreds of people to the same church. Some in support, others against it. We'll hear from both sides. That's coming up. Plus, we knew it was going to be something different and new, and like we learned a lot of lessons from it, so it's absolutely worth it. San Antonio's Proposition A defeated by voters last night, but the group who put it on the ballot says they have no regrets. We're going to hear from them in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday morning. It is just about 6.30. It is May 7th. It is the day after Election Day, and I got to say, I walked outside this morning. It's just a rug of humidity. It, it's gross. It was gross. It's pretty gross. Also, we got to put that on forecast, just gross. Gross. Yeah, the, the humidity. mosquitoes are outside. Right. And, humidity ugh. will be with us, and we are going to have passing downpours this morning. Take a look at the radar. It's fairly quiet around San Antonio right now, but we do see, as we zoom out, quite a bit of showers uh, and even a few rumbles of thunder that are on their way to the Alamo City. Let me go ahead and put this in motion here. You can see in Atascosa County down near Pleasanton, there's a few rumbles of thunder there as well as in Bee County and south of Kennedy and Carnes County as well. And then over to the west in Medina County, a decent amount of uh, shower activity moving through Hondo right now, Yavaldi, Sabinal, and there is one organized thunderstorm out west toward Eagle Pass and in Maverick County that is moving to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour. It'll be near the Yavaldi area uh, just shortly here by about uh, 757 this morning as it continues its trek up to the north and to the east. Here's the thing around San Antonio. Again, we're not going to have a washout of a day, but we are going to have to dodge a few showers and even a few rumbles of thunder as well. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the radar for you throughout this morning, but I just want to tell you what you need to know for your weekly weather timeline and things that we're going to talk about in the forecast. So today, those clouds are going to stick around. We're going to have passing thunder showers for some. Not everybody is going to see rain. You'll be dodging downpours. 
Rain chances in the next week are daily, but pretty low coverage, 20 to 30 percent. Daily dodging downpours this week, and the humidity is going to stay very high, as Max and Sarah alluded to. Very humid, daily morning fog. Coming up, a more in-depth look at the radar. I'll time out some of these storms and when they could make it to San Antonio. We'll look at a rainfall timeline, and we'll talk about our, a pretty active forecast this upcoming week. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man in police custody after a shooting and allegedly causing bodily injury to an infant. Alyssa Cole joins us outside of police headquarters with more details from detectives. Yes, police made the arrest last night. They arrested Alejandro Dominic Martinez, and he's being booked for injury to a child, seriously bodily injury. Take a look at your screen. This is the perp walk we captured last night with our KSAT cameras. The, the arrest was made last night from an incident that happened back on April 12th on the 2300 block of Loop 1604. Martinez and his girlfriend, who's also been arrested, were arguing at an apartment complex, and police Police tell us when the argument escalated, Martinez had a gun and police tell us his girlfriend constantly asked for the gun back during the argument. And of course, when the argument continued, a shot was fired. Police tells us it's unclear who pulled the trigger, but we do know the girlfriend was shot and the bullet simultaneously hit an eight month eight month old baby. The baby was taken to the hospital where it later died. And that's when police say Martinez went on the run. Now, of course, detectives have been working for weeks. That's what police tell us. And they were able to locate Martinez on the 1100th block of IH 35 in a motel. They were able to do that yesterday. You all are taking a look at the video on your screen right now. And that is Martinez being arrested and later booked with San Antonio police. Now we are still getting information about this case. We will continue to keep you updated throughout our later newscast and on our website at KSAT.com. But for now reporting downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. All new, also new this morning, a man is dead following a late night crash. It happened just before 10 last night on Loop 410 near Old Pearsall Road. Police tell us the driver of a car cut across all the lanes of the highway to get onto the access road. That's when the driver of an SUV slammed into the car. The man who died was a passenger in the car. He died at the scene. The driver of the car and two people in the SUV were taken to the hospital. And as we continue our election coverage this morning, Prop A was the biggest draw to the polls for San Antonio voters. That's right. However, most people in the city, they voted against it. Take a look at the latest numbers. Early results showed that Prop A would be shot down and, well, it was. 72% of our voters voting against the city charter amendment. So it had numerous elements to it. We've been covering it extensively for weeks. Now it had marijuana and abortion decriminalization. It expanded the site and release, the chokehold and the no-knock warrant bans, and a new justice director position. Though some criticized how much was in a single amendment. Now the head of the group who led the campaign to put it on the ballot, she says she doesn't regret putting it on there at all. The conversations that we had at the door, the coalition that we built, uh, made it worth it uh, because that's movement building and that's community building. Uh, we knew it was going to be something different and new and like we learned a lot of lessons from it. So it's absolutely worth it. Opponents, especially the San Antonio Police Union, they focus their arguments on the site and release elements. Officers would largely have to cite people rather than arrest them. So right now they'll have more discretion to cite or arrest. Meanwhile, San Antonio voters are letting Mayor Ron Nirenberg lead the city for a fourth and final term. Nirenberg beat out eight other candidates. He and his family were emotional during their celebration at the friendly spot last night. They say they were glad for the work that's been accomplished in creating affordable housing, education opportunities and job creation. He says he's not leaving the job until his work is done. He was asked if he's thinking about what's next after his term is done. Listen to what he said. I can only see up those two years because, uh, you know, honestly, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, and, you know, politicians make mistakes when they think far in advance. So I'm working to make sure that I have the best and most effective tenure as I possibly can. Nirenberg is set to become one of the longest running mayors to serve the city after Henry Cisneros. All right. That is far from our only election coverage. It continues online. And 
we were live out at the polls throughout the week and we talked about how much is on the ballot and one of those school bonds. There were extensive school bonds and all of them except for one passed. So Prop B in Comal ISD, the only school bond that was voted down. We have a full breakdown of the school bonds and what it means for your respective property taxes right now. Just head to KSAT.com. The story is on our homepage. Time is 636, 74 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, not all of the San Antonio City Council races have a winner. We'll look at two districts. They'll have runoff elections in June. Plus, we are going to be talking about the latest controversy. A new brothels pastor says no one should be afraid to express themselves, but that didn't stop protesters from showing up to a drag show hosted by the church. We're going to hear from both sides next. Dodging downpours this morning. Sarah says there is some rain on the radar, but the likelihood that it's going to rain in your neighborhood, not as high as you may think, but she'll explain when we come back. This morning, eight people are dead after a police after police say a gunman opened fire at an outdoor outlet mall in Allen, Texas. That's near Dallas. So everything unfolded just after 3:30 yesterday afternoon. Now, the Allen police chief says one of his officers just happened to be at that mall for an unrelated incident. That's when the officer heard gunshots. The chief says officers went towards the gunfire, ended up confronting the gunman before he quote neutralized him unquote. Now shoppers were evacuated walking outside with their hands up. Many shoppers say they ran inside stores to hide from the gunfire. Pop, 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 pop. And we saw sparks flying like it was right in front of us. So we just ran into the Converse store. They locked the door. We uh, all hunkered down in the back. We are still waiting to learn more information. The eight victims range in ages from five years old to 61. Right now, law enforcement believe the suspect acted alone. Well, back here in San Antonio, a two year old in critical condition and the parents tell San Antonio police the child accidentally shot themselves. Now, this all happened just after seven last night on West Agarita Avenue near Fredericksburg and I-10. Police say the two year old was possibly playing with the gun. That's when it went off. A bullet went through their left cheek, left cheek, clipped their ear. The father was home, told police he didn't even hear the gunshot. The toddler taken to University Hospital and is in critical but stable condition. Police waiting for a search warrant to go into the home and continue this investigation. Well, now to New Braunfels and what was called a family-friendly drag show at a church. Some people supporting it, calling it an age-appropriate art performance, while protesters say the show was harmful to children. Around 100 people stood outside the Faith Church in New Braunfels last night, some carrying signs, some singing songs, but all protesting what was happening inside the church. Three drag queens performed as part of a fundraiser benefiting at-risk youth in Comal County. Our cameras weren't allowed inside, but the event was open to people of all ages. Just trying to give an experience for people 
where they can be around drag queens and understand that they're just human and they're performers and they are appropriate for anybody to be around. It's the sexualization or the sexual uh, performance. It's the, you know, that's what drag queen shows are. It's a sexually charged kind of a caricature of a woman. And that's what we're not fans of. Security was tight at the event with at least a dozen New Braunfels police officers standing by. And the issue spans far outside of the New Braunfels event. Texas lawmakers have advanced two bills that would restrict and at times criminalize drag shows and anything deemed sexually oriented performance. Well, we're going to continue our election coverage this morning. The race for District 1, the city council spot, it is headed to a runoff election. So between incumbent Mario Bravo, his top two challengers, Jeremy Roberts and Sukkor. Now, none of these candidates are running away with the majority of the votes needed to clinch the victory. So all three say they're ready for a challenge of the runoff and will keep reaching voters where they're at. I will continue to knock on doors. I will continue to talk to voters and I will continue to modify what I've been uh, wanting to propose for the city based on what voters tell me. I think it's an opportunity to uh, go back to our strong supporters and make sure that they're all showing up to volunteer, tapping into their network. We're going to have to knock a lot more doors and uh, just let people know that the election's happening. We're going to go in high, we're going to play a clean race and we're going to go and ask for a vote and we're going to be sincere. Um, one of the things that's been crazy is I've put my phone number out there and I've asked voters to call me. So the runoff election set for June 10th. All of this according to the Bear County Elections Department. Obviously, we are going to be covering this extensively. Meanwhile, the race to replace Anna Sandoval in District 7 also headed to a runoff. Marina Alderet Gavito led comfortably throughout election night, but it was not enough to avoid a runoff against Dan Rossiter, who finished second. She was the favorite and is considered a rising tech and business leader. Rossiter worked with Southwest Research Institute for years and the Brooks Development Authority. He said this is what they hoped for heading into last night. Gavito is also ready to keep building momentum. I still want to use my business acumen and community leadership experience to serve the residents, uh, really bring accountability and transparency to City Hall, use my business acumen to make sure that we're using our taxpayer dollars efficiently and effectively. Let's focus on issues. So since January of this uh, year, we began talking about the real issues. We began talking about transportation, infrastructure, the needs the District 7 residents have all the way from Bandera in the north to Calabria in the south. And it worked. Sandoval resigned in late January, opening this council seat for the first time in years. The runoff election will be June 10th. All right, right now at KSAT.com, keeping our eye on all the races surrounding our areas as well. For example, Bernie has a new mayor. Political newcomer Frank Ritchie beat longtime councilwoman Nina Woolard, 76% to 24%. Current mayor Tim Handron, he didn't seek re-election. All right, so obviously talking about the weather, talking about breaking news, got to talk about the weather. That's right, Sarah. Absolutely. You know, it's fairly quiet around San Antonio right now. All the rain is around us, but I want to show you a wider view here of the reason why we're seeing some of this rain around San Antonio. So we're looking at the upper levels of the atmosphere. We've got these wiggles in the upper levels of the atmosphere called short waves and short waves. They often are not effective rainmakers, but they do create random rain. It pops up in areas uh, all around South Central Texas, and that's what we're seeing right now. It's not like this established low pressure system, which brought a healthy amount of rain to the Dallas Fort Worth area, but this is the reason why we have some random rain showers out there right now. So here's what you need to know. Cloudy today with passing thunder showers for some. Not everybody is going to see rain. The way I like to describe it is dodging downpours. So our rain chance is not only today but for most of this week are going to be fairly low in coverage 20 to 30 percent but we are going to have a daily chance for that 20 to 30 percent humidity very humid all week long with daily morning fog so let's get into it let's talk about the radar right now i'm going to go ahead and grab my other uh, remote the radar remote here as we take a closer look around san antonio as you can see around the alamo city right now it is fairly quiet but there's rain rain everywhere around us especially south of san antonio toward 
Pleasanton and Floresville and near Elmendorf as well. Flashes of lightning pushing through Pleasanton as we speak. Uh, now there could be some very small pea-sized hail with these, but we're not seeing any kind of major severe weather. Hail has to be the size of a quarter to be considered damaging or severe. But down near Kennedy, there's some good uh, showers and storms as well. You can see that these showers that are forming in southeastern Medina County could quickly move into San Antonio area here soon. And then as I zoom out and change over to the radar that's closer to the border, what you'll notice is that there is this cluster of thunderstorms that has just moved through Eagle Pass. It's pushing uh, nearer to Crystal City in Uvalde. It's moving to the northeast, east northeast at about 35 miles per hour. This cluster may fall apart before it can even reach San Antonio, but if it were to make it to San Antonio, it would be in the San Antonio area. I'm going to do that one again. It would be in the San Antonio area. We're going to go ahead and draw that again for you. Uh, so here it is right now nearer to Eagle Pass in Crystal City. It could be around San Antonio by about 1030 this morning. So I'm going to be tracking the radar. It is not going to be a washout today by any means, not raining constantly all day, but we may have to dodge a few of these downpours. As I take you through the future cast, you can see that that's one solution later on this afternoon. A couple of isolated thunder showers. Not everybody is going to see healthy rain, but some will get some rain today. Then closer to the border later on tonight, some storms will develop, but those will likely not make it to San Antonio. The heavier of the rain and the more uh, severe weather will be up near Dallas, Fort Worth and Abilene, but only isolated around San Antonio. 74 degrees and cloudy. The big thing you'll notice today, uh, if you're not seeing rain, is the humidity. Dew points are in the 70s. Temperatures in the 70s right now around San Antonio. And as you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, 40% coverage this morning will drop that to 30% this afternoon. It's going to be cloudy and warm with a high of 88 and as I mentioned a pretty interesting weather pattern this week very spring like daily chances for rain although coverage will be low humidity will be a big factor having that case out weather authority app is going to be handy because not only will we update you directly to your phone there's a radar on there this is one of those days don't cancel your plans but if you see on the radar that a shower is coming just make sure to have a quick way to duck inside yeah take an umbrella with you no big deal yeah <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 651, 74 degrees. Still ahead this morning. This is one of my favorite events that happens twice a year here in San Antonio, Ciclovia. We're going to be live downtown for the festivities. How you can play in the street. We'll give you a preview next. Looking ahead, Southwest Independent School District announcing in a letter released to parents that starting Monday, yes, tomorrow, Backpacks and large purses will no longer be allowed on campuses. This no backpack policy goes through the end of the year. And the district says this new policy is to reduce the risk of dangerous items being brought onto the school campus. Small clear bags and a one gallon clear freezer bag, they are allowed. If you have any questions, if there's any parents out there that want more information, we have the entire new policy right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Happening today, if you're able to get outside, the YMCA of Greater San Antonio is hosting their biannual Ciclovia event from 9 a.m. this morning to 1 p.m. The city streets will be closed down for people to get out and exercise, play and explore. The route will go through Midtown and this will go on rain or shine. You can find a map of that route and more information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, time is 6.55, 74 degrees out. We got a lot coming up throughout the morning. We hear the terms all the time, interest rates, savings rates, mortgages. There is so much going on across the financial world. And here's the thing, they're frequently used terms, but they might have a huge impact on you and your family. Monique Dillon, the president of Victory Solutions, Victory Capital, joining us live at 8 a.m. So keep it right here for Leading SA. We'll be right back. Alrighty, here's a current look at the radar. You can see how widely separated these showers and storms are. Some folks like near Pleasanton are getting heavy downpours. Lightning, Kennedy getting heavy downpours as well. It's fairly quiet around San Antonio at the moment, but I'm watching this storm that's near Uvalde, Crystal City, to see if it can hold on and make it to the Alamo City by about 10 o'clock this morning. So until this morning, we're going to carry about a 40% chance for 
thunderstorms. Then later on today, we'll lower that to about 30%. It's not going to rain everywhere all day, but just something to keep in mind later on. 88 degrees for the high, staying cloudy too, and gusty winds from the southeast up to 20 miles per hour. Looking ahead, tomorrow less rain, 92 for the high, and that humidity is going to make it feel like 100. And in the week ahead too, we're going to have daily chances for isolated rain. So dodging downpours throughout the week. It's not going to be a washout by any means, but it is something that we're going to be keeping our eye on. Keep your outdoor plans. Just have a backup plan in case. Yeah, we know Cyclovia is happening later today at yeah. 9, and it's part happening. Part of it may be rainy, and then part of it will probably And not. it's going to happen rain or shine. Yeah. Thank right. you, Sarah. Stay with us. We're going to take an hour-long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8. Well, we're dodging some showers and storms around San Antonio. It's fairly quiet around the Alamo City right now, but you go just to the south near to Floresville, Pleasanton, Poteet, Poth. That's where we've got some of the thunder, some of the lightning, even some small pea sized hail. Not technically severe, but definitely loud near Kennedy and Goliad as well. Now, as we look ahead to the remainder of the day, just know that we have a chance, 30 to 40 percent chance for a few isolated showers and storms around San Antonio. It's going to stay cloudy and warm with a high of 88. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Rain everywhere, all around, except for in San Antonio. We do have some isolated showers moving through SeaWorld, Palo Alto College, and near Castroville. But really, there's a storm that's moving through Wilson County right now between Elmendorf and Floresville that is capable of some smaller hail. Meanwhile, out to the west, there is a severe thunderstorm warning for areas uh, nearer to Crystal City, really honestly just north of Crystal City for Zavala, Texas. Zavala County until 830 for up to quarter sized hail. Now this looks like it's going to track south of San Antonio, but I'm going to be keeping my eye on things for us. Otherwise, in San Antonio, we're going to be dodging a few downpours during the day today. So 40% chance for storms through 10 in the afternoon, slightly less chance. It's going to stay cloudy though, with highs in the upper 80s and very humid weather outside. I'll be keeping track of the radar for you again. Not everybody's going to see rain, but some will. Just a few light showers around San Antonio, but a storm moving through Wilson County and through areas near DeWitt County. There's a severe storm in uh, Zavala County that's moving east into Frio County. Coming up at 8, I've got an in-depth look at the radar and what we can expect today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. We are starting the morning off with a live look out of the Alamo City. 74 degrees, but it is humid. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is May 7th. We have a good lot morning. to talk about today. But yesterday, there was so much going on. There was Election Day. There was election a lot of, Day. A lot of people out and about. Did you see any rain? Okay, so I went to the Botanical Gardens. They have a new exhibit there. Beautiful, by the way. Um, Sarah, yeah, we we had we dodged some showers yesterday, Ooh. but it, we didn't really see a downpour. But that was it was because it was kind of like in just spots. Yeah, hit or miss rain yesterday. That's what that 20 to 30 percent was all about. Today, right now, this morning, we have storms kind of all around San Antonio. Just some light rain moving through San Antonio. I want to bring your attention though to the severe thunderstorm that's working its way through Zavala County. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning for Zavala County until 8:30. This storm is capable of producing some hail, and you can see that pink and purple hail core there just south of 57, south of Batesville, kind of falling over ranch land right now. And even though Frio County is not under this warning, I do expect for it to hold together into Frio County. And so I'm going to go ahead and track that hail core east at about 30 miles per hour. That's how fast it's moving. So it could be near the Pearsall area by about nine o'clock. So if you are in Pearsall, uh, it'll be to the north of Dilly. But if you are in Pearsall, make sure to be in your safe place. This is going to move south of San Antonio. I'm going to turn the radar on nearer to San Antonio, and you can see that in the Alamo City, all we're getting is some isolated light rain showers. Really, all of the heavier thunderstorms have been south and east of San Antonio, closer to Elmendorf, Floresville, Cuero, Yorktown, Goliad, and Gonzales. Here in San Antonio, it is not going to be a washout today. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you the forecast for your Sunday. Really, only a 30% chance 
chance for rain during the rest of the day today. It is going to stay cloudy. It is oppressively humid out there, very humid. And we'll look at a high of 88. More in depth look at that radar. I'll be tracking some of those storms for neighborhoods surrounding San Antonio, and I'll walk you through the forecast for next week, which is going to carry daily small rain chances. So a lot to chat about in the forecast in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Obviously election coverage, some of the talk of the morning, and it is final San Antonio voters allowing Mayor Rod Nuremberg to lead the city for a fourth and final term. Uh, Mayor Nuremberg beating out eight other candidates, one of a few mayors to be elected in his term limits, being one of the longest serving mayors in the Alamo City after Henry C. Cisneros. Now, in total, he served the city 10 years, including his time as councilman. So, Prop A also technically the biggest draw to people going to the polls in San Antonio. So here's a look at the final numbers. 72% of San Antonians voting against Prop A, only 28% voting for it. It had numerous elements to it, marijuana and abortion decriminalization, expanding sight and release chokehold and no knock warrant bans and a new justice director position, though some criticized how much was in the single amendment. The head, gr head of the group who led the campaign to put it on the ballot does not regret putting it all into one vote. The conversations that we had at the door, the coalition that we built, uh, made it worth it uh, because that's movement building and that's community building. Uh, we knew it was going to be something different and new and like we learned a lot of lessons from it, so it's absolutely worth it. So opponents, especially the San Antonio Police Union, they focus their arguments on the site and release elements. Officers would largely have to cite people rather than actually arrest them, where as they currently have a lot more discretion. The race for District 1 council spot is a tight one between three candidates. And it is now heading to a runoff election. Leah Waldman was with the three candidates all vying for one spot. All three of those top candidates campaigning for the District 1 seat tell me the same thing. They are ready for a runoff election. Between incumbent Mario Bravo and his top two challengers, Jeremy Roberts and Succor, none of these candidates running away with a majority of the votes needed to clench a victory. I asked each of them how they're planning to approach a runoff race. I will continue to knock on doors. I will continue to talk to voters and I will continue to modify what I've been uh, wanting to propose for the city based on what voters tell me. I think it's an opportunity to uh, go back to our strong supporters and make sure that they're all showing up to volunteer, tapping into their network. We're going to have to knock a lot more doors and uh, just let people know that the election's happening. We're going to go in high, we're going to play a clean race, and we're going to go and ask for a vote, and we're going to be sincere. Um, one of the things that's been crazy is I've put my phone number out there and I've asked voters to call me. That runoff election is slated to happen on June 10th. That's according to the Bear County Elections Department. Lee Waldman for GMSA. Thank you, Lee. Those are just a couple of the big races we are following this morning. Keep it right here for continued coverage on everything you need to know. And you can also find the latest on KSAT.com on our homepage. You can find it all, including the bonds that passed for some of the local school districts. All right, so interest rates, the Fed, 529s. We hear these terms so much in our local and our national news but they might have a real impact on you and your family. That's right. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Monique Dillon, President Victory Solutions of Victory Capital, joining us live. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Good morning. It's good to see you guys again. Thank you so much. So we hear about the report on the Fed continuously raising interest rates. Can you kind of break down what the purpose is and, and really how it impacts our local families? Yeah, it's an important topic for, for everybody out there. Um, you know, we've been feeling the impact everyone has of inflation for some time now, right? Where prices have gone up pretty quickly, in fact, uh, post the COVID environment. And that's what the Fed is trying to combat. They're trying to dampen or control that inflation. And, and the way they do that is by increasing interest rates. And that, the way that happens is that that makes it more costly for individuals and companies to borrow money. So that means you tend to spend less, invest less, and that helps control demand and brings prices down. Uh, but it, on the flip side of whatever impacts interest rates can have, you have to look back and say, the goal is to bring down inflation, which was very painful also. So what does this mean for mortgage rates then? 
Yeah, uh, we've seen it, right? Uh, with increasing interest rates, the cost to borrow goes up. And that's for any type of purchase, really, that you're you're borrowing money for. And, and the home is often the, the largest purchase that a family can make. So interest rates have gone up. And what this does is it, it makes buying a new home more expensive than it was perhaps two years ago, for example. Um, it, it's something to pay attention to. So for the same amount of money, you can afford less of a house or potentially folks and families are waiting, uh, waiting longer, waiting for maybe prices to come down or interest rates to come down before they make that purchase. I'm going to try to look at a silver lining of this, Monik. So with higher interest rates, is there any benefit? I mean, savings accounts, you know, is there any way for local families to actually use this to their advantage? No, it's a great question, because in most situations, there is a positive to, to, to extract from it, right? And one of those is that savings rates and money market rates haven't been as high as they are now for quite some time. So actually taking cash, if you have some, uh, if you saved a little bit of cash, you got the rainy day fund, you can actually earn a nice yield or interest rate return on it. Um, and, and what and like money markets are generally are, are really risk-free investments. So a lot of the conversations we're having with clients are about what to do with that a little bit of cash that you might have saved up in the last couple of years, how to put it to work for you uh, around money markets, short-term bond funds, things like that. So we've seen college prices just keep going up over the last several decades. So as college is fast approaching for some families and students, what strategy do you advise to make to that cost more manageable for them? Well, one of the toughest things about saving for college is inflation, right? Because inflation leads to more expensive tuition bills over time. A college savings plan is a great tool to help combat that because it can participate in increasing prices in stocks and bonds as inflation starts to pick up. So you can try to keep pace. And the best way to do that is in a consistent way. So a lot of our clients, we, we talk to them about using what's called an automatic investment plan. So that way you're not having to time the market and whether you're saving for college or retirement and just continuously put a little bit of money to work every month, every quarter. And that way you can enter and save in, in a more smooth aspect over time. And so a college savings plan can be a great way to combat what inflation does to tuition bills. All right, Monik Dillon, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your time. Anyone who missed any of the interview or has questions, we have all the answers. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now is 810, 74 degrees out. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It's a muggy one in Ooh. some areas. Oh, oh hey. I'm still here. I thought we were going Max, out. I was, Max I was trying, trying to, to go outside. Trying to go outside. Honestly, it's because Sarah just boosted the temperature <laughs> in here and needs some water. <laughs> it's cold in here. Hey, but it's not feeling too cold outside. 74 degrees and muggy at 810 and some showers in our viewing area. Sarah will show us that when we come back. Good morning, San Antonio. As some may say, it is time to play in the San Antonio streets. For some, like Sarah Costa, this is one of the best times of year. I love Ciclovia because you can ride, walk, roll in the streets in Midtown San Antonio for the YMCA Ciclovia, where one and a half of the roads will be closed for the community to safely get out and be active. That's right. Alyssa Cole joining us live with a preview. Alyssa, how does it look out there? Good morning, you all. That's exactly what's about to happen. The preparations are underway. You can hear the different staple guns, the hammers going at it to set up tents and stages. Take a look. You got the Sheriff County Department out or office out here. You have the different vendors, including the city. They're going to be out here. Hello. Good morning. They're going to be out here offering the COVID-19 and flu vaccines to add to that healthy, healthy 
wellness, physical, active day, as you all mentioned, Max and Sarah. Now, this is what we know. This will be starting at 9 a.m. and it'll be running until one o'clock today. These are the streets that will be shut down in Midtown. We will have Jones Avenue, North Alamo, West Laurel, North Main Avenue all closed down today. Crockett, Madison and Maverick Parks parks will be activated and we know there will be water, there will be refreshments, there will be live DJ, there will be all kinds of fun along the routes where you all can bike, run, walk through the different areas through Midtown, walk around and jump to the different parks if that's what you wish. And of course, if you're looking to get the booster shot, we've been talking about that too in our newscast, you'll have the opportunity to do so as well here. Stick with us because in our later, later in our show, in our half hour, we'll get a chance to talk to one of the YMCA officials of Greater San Antonio and they'll break down everything you need to know for Ciclovia today. So stick with us. I'll send it back to you all. Thank you, Alyssa. And hey, Sarah, maybe light showers the start of Ciclovia? Some light to moderate rain will be possible during the first couple of hours of Ciclovia. You can see that all the heavier of the rain is east of San Antonio, but uh, as we look out to the west near to Hondo, uh, Rio Medina, there are some light rain showers. This is all a part of an, uh, the northern section of this severe storm, which is currently working its way through Zavala County, the uh, eastern portion of Zavala County. I'm turning on the radar that's closer to here. Any Anywhere you see this purple color, this is where we have hail the size of quarters or uh, half dollars uh, possible just to the southeast of Batesville, just to the south of 57. Now this storm has been weakening as it's moving east, but if it can hold together uh, toward the Pearsall area, it would be in Pearsall. It's moving to the east at about 30 miles per hour. It would be in Pearsall by about 9, 905. So if you're joining us right now watching from Frio County, watching from Zavala County. Know that Pearsall, you should be on alert. This storm is moving east toward I-35 at 30 miles per hour. Meanwhile, as I mentioned around San Antonio, really we're being surrounded by all of the heavier of the rain. There's been quite a bit of thunderstorm activity southeast of San Antonio toward Floresville, Pleasanton, Kennedy. Right now that uh, heavier rain and storms is working its way through Gonzales and Guadalupe County. So southern Seguin, we're talking about areas uh, nearer to Jake's Colony and Belmont. That's where we've got quite a bit of lightning right now as well. But again, around San Antonio, really this this area of light to moderate rain moving east at about 30 miles per hour. It could be near the downtown San Antonio area by about 915. Uh, nearer to North uh, Bear County by about 901 and South Bear County by about 905. So just some light to moderate rain for San Antonio in the forecast this morning. You'll just want to dodge those showers. This is not going to be a washout by any means, but into the afternoon there could be one or two isolated thunderstorms as well. So just keep the radar handy with you for those outdoor plans. If you have outdoor plans, duck inside if you end up uh, seeing a shower or a storm. It should pass fairly quickly. Later on tonight, nearer to the border, there could be some storms, but really the heaviest of the thunderstorm activity is going to be closer to midnight, nearer to the Dallas-Fort Worth and I-35 corridor no north of Waco. So while most of us around San Antonio will only see light rain today, all of us are going to experience uh, the high humidity. That is a big factor. Cloudy, 74. Dew points are in the 70s, bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture from the southeast. East. It's oppressively humid outside and it's very mild with temperatures in the 70s right now. However, once we head into the later part of the morning, right around noon, we'll be at 80. Notice too that rain chances are highest right now, but afternoon they'll be slightly less and then 88 for the high today will be only in the 80s after sunset around 8 uh, o'clock. So looking at those highs, if you get some rain, maybe a little bit cooler than this, but generally upper 80s around San Antonio, mid 90s out west toward Del Rio Eagle Pass and Laredo. And then one thing I want to focus on here is I want to show you the reason why we're dealing with this random moving rain. It's because we've got these short waves in the southwest flow of the upper levels of the atmosphere. They 
create random spots of rain. Not as easy to forecast for these as it is for this low pressure system. You can see how the rain there near Dallas was much more organized around that low. And so as we look at the week ahead, we're going to be looking at those short waves pretty much every single day. What does that mean? It means there's a chance for rain every day, but the chance is low 20 to 30%. All right, it's not until Saturday of this next weekend that we see our rain chances really tick up. Otherwise, humidity is a big story this week. Very, very humid indeed. If you are joining us from Zavala County, Frio County, if you do see some hail and you can get out safely afterwards, go ahead and post those pictures on our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. I'd love to show them on air. Using a coin, right? Yeah, a coin would be great for reference. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. 821, 74 degrees. Yesterday was election day here in San Antonio. We still have the runoffs, but already the nation is taking sight on the 2024 presidential election. We have the latest after the break. Good morning and welcome back. We have the latest on the biggest name so far who has yet to announce a presidential run. Ron DeSantis. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with what new recordings are showing and how that could soon change. Has the NRA donated to me? I, I don't think the NRA is quite the boogeyman the Democrats think it is. This morning, new video obtained exclusively by ABC News shows Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in debate prep sessions when he first ran for governor five years ago. Do we hit him on guns or just everyone who cares about every, guns is going to vote for me? The candid moments from 2018 come as sources say DeSantis' team is already prepping for the 2024 presidential debates. DeSantis would need to win over Trump voters, an issue he grappled with in the past as he ran for governor. Is there any issue upon which you disagree with President Trump? Obviously there is because I've, I've, been, I've voted contrary to him in the Congress. The past internal recordings offering a rare glimpse into how DeSantis has previously wrestled with how to appeal to Trump's loyal base. I have to frame it in a way that's not going to piss off all his voters. So what I do is I do what I think is right. I support um, his agenda in terms of what he's been able to do. If I have a disagreement, I talk to him in private. Florida lawmakers Matt Gates and Byron Donalds helping DeSantis then, but have since endorsed Trump's third White House bid. In the video, aides coaching DeSantis on a range of topics, including how to be likable. I think when you walk up there, if you have a pad, you have to write in all caps at the top of the pad, likable. And then look, I, I do the same thing because I have the same personality. We're both aggressive. And that was ABC's Faith Abube reporting. Time now, 826, 75 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday. It's May 7th, the day after Election Day. Mm -hmm. I know we have Cyclovia happening in just a bit, but Sarah, you were saying some light rain showers moving through. Through San Antonio, yeah. We're starting to see some light rain develop in the western part of Bear County. It's pushing into San Antonio. Really, the thunderstorm activity is uh, all around San Antonio, south and east, and then south and west as well. Let's go ahead and zoom in to Bear County here. You can see that some light rain has really started to develop from Leon Springs down to uh, areas along I-10 closer to UTSA and then down to 410 on the west side. Uh, we're seeing some light rain, more moderate rain between Rio Medina and Castroville. Meanwhile, thunderstorms really starting to blossom across areas in Wilson and Atascosa County near Carnes County as well near Goliad and Quero seeing quite a bit of thunderstorm activity. Hey, Pearsall, I know uh, we were talking about that storm potentially moving in and producing some hail. Watch what has happened. It really has started to weaken as it's moving moved into Frio County. So that's some good news there. Maybe some small hail along 57, but we do not anticipate any large hail from that storm. Again, perhaps a rumble of thunder around San Antonio in the next two hours or so, but really just some passing light rain. Today is not going to be a washout. If you have afternoon plans, know that the day for the most part is going to be cloudy. Yes, there could be a few passing thunder showers for some, but we're not going to have washout as far as uh, widespread showers and storms all day long. The biggest thing is it's going to be very humid today. Rain chances over the next few days will daily dodge 
dodge some downpours. So rain chances are only 20 to 30 percent, but there is a chance for that rain every day. And then finally, the humidity. We got to talk about how this week is going to be very humid, feeling a lot like spring with daily morning fog too. Another look at that radar and in-depth tracking of those storms, and we'll talk about the forecast ahead, the daily dodging of downpours that we're going to have to do. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Prop A was the main draw for the city elections here in San Antonio. More people cast an early ballot in the Prop A rates than voting for mayor. So an overwhelming majority, 72% of voters voted against it. Garen Berger has the breakdown from last night. From the early results alone, it was clear that Proposition A was going down. So it made for an easy night at the main opposition watch party. The Justice Charter, as supporters called it, aimed to decriminalize marijuana possession and abortion, expand the city's site and release program, create a new justice director position, and embed bans on chokeholds and no-knock warrants in the charter. But several city council members came out against it, and the city attorney said most of it wasn't even enforceable. Sight and release in particular became a focus since the change would largely mandate officers sight instead of arresting people for certain offenses, whereas they now have more discretion. Opponents in the police union and business community claimed that would lead to more crime, which struck a chord with voters. You know, and in, in, in mentioning to people, no one has a right to take your stuff, right? Uh, and I've said this before, as kids, we were taught not to lie, cheat, or steal. The, this proposition allowed some of that, and, and that's just not right for the community, the business community. Both sides accused the other of misleading voters or misinformation, and a police union control pack pumped more than 1.8 million into the race. The head of Act for SA, which led the campaign to get Prop A onto the ballot, blamed the size of their loss on the amount of money the union and others had spent fighting it. She said she did not regret pulling all of the issues on the same proposition. And while this went down hard, she does expect more initiatives like this in the future. GMSA, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Well, District 2 Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez had a huge showing and one of the biggest showings by an incumbent last night. He held off nine opponents, winning a second term in office and even avoided a runoff. Take a look at that. Ricky Rodriguez actually becomes the first East Side Council person to be reelected in a decade, and it does provide some stability to the seat that's really been known for the last few years for its constant turnover. I got our council to um, change our equity lens, our infrastructure equity lens, and so that District 2 will be receiving millions of more dollars. We're not going to be basing it off of size and condition of district, but rather just condition of district. So McKee Rodriguez says he is already looking forward to seeing what comes of his long list of council consideration requests. And the race to replace Anna Sandoval in District 7 is headed to a runoff. All right, so Marina Gavito led comfortably throughout election night, but not enough to avoid a runoff. Dan Rossiter, who finished second. Now, R.J. Marquez, he was there. He has a full breakdown of the results. Yeah, good morning. It was a very interesting race in District 7, a replacement here for Ana Sandoval. And Marina Alderete Gavido, she was considered the favorite by many people headed into last night. And she actually held a more than 20-point percentage margin lead throughout the evening, but it was not, it not enough to hold off a runoff election with the second-place finisher, Dan Rossiter. Alderete Gavido held her watch party at Lisa's Restaurant on Bandera Road and thanked supporters, and that included the fire and police unions. Gavido has worked with Rackspace and USA and is considered a rising tech and business leader. Now, as far as Dan Rossiter, he held his party down the road, also on Bandera Road. Rossiter has worked with Southwest Research Institute for years and with the Brooks Development Authority. Here's what both candidates have to say about some of the issues that are facing District 7 voters as we head into the runoff. I still want to use my business acumen and community leadership experience to serve the residents, uh, really bring accountability and transparency to City Hall. Let's focus on issues. So since January of this uh, year, we began talking about the real issues. We began talking about transportation, infrastructure, the needs the District 7 residents have all the way from Bandera in the north to Calabria in the south. And it worked. And both candidates say that they are ready to continue the momentum that they've built since late January when Sandoval uh, resigned from the city council position and they are excited about what's ahead as they get set for this runoff election on June 10th. Reporting from the northwest side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, RJ. A new councilman is heading to District 10 as Clayton Perry did not seek re-election. The race going in favor of Mark White. Erica Hernandez ha was following District 10 last night as White says he's ready to get to work. District 10 Councilman Mark White. Former District 10 Councilman Mike Gallagher introducing Mark White to his supporters. Gallagher just one of many former District 10 Councilmen who endorsed White's campaign. Outgoing in battle Councilman Clayton Perry also showing up to support White. White ran a campaign all about family, faith and freedom. I want to tell the voters in District 10 um, that I hear you. I'm going to get to work for you um, as soon as we get there. And White, who leans conservative, had this to say to his new colleagues. I know that we're not going to agree on everything. Um, that's for sure. Um, but I am ready to work with all of you on any issue um, at any time. Uh, in me, you're going to have somebody that tells you what I think, um, that fights for, for what I believe is right, uh, but that's someone that's always willing to listen to you, uh, to hear your perspective, and to try to fight find common ground. Some background about White. He owns his own law firm here in town. He is married with two young daughters. Now he was really emotional about his win, but he tells me he is ready to get to work for District 10. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Right now on KSAT.com, our election coverage continues. All but one school bond passed for four local districts. So the only one that didn't pass was Prop B in Comal ISD that was voted down. We have a full breakdown of what you need to know. If you have any questions, just head to KSAT.com. We have all the stories. Just head to the homepage. New this morning, a man is dead following a late night crash. It happened just before 10 last night on Loop 410 near Old Pearsall Road. Police tell us the driver of a car cut across all the lanes of the highway to get access onto the access road. That's when the driver of an SUV slammed into the car. The man who died was a passenger in the car. He died at the scene. The driver of the car and two people in that SUV were taken to the hospital. Tragic news yesterday. Eight people dead after that shooting at an outlet mall in Allen, Texas. Seven more in the hospital. Of those seven, three are in critical condition. So this is what we know right now. It happened yesterday afternoon. Witnesses say they heard about 60 to 70 gunshots fired. Now, authorities say an officer who was on actually another call, he heard the gunfire, he ran towards it, and that's when he killed the gunman. Police still investigating. They're working to figure out the motive for the shooting. We have still waiting to learn the name of the gunman and the identity of the victims. Police in Mississippi are looking for the gunman responsible for a deadly mass shooting in South Mississippi. Someone opened fire at a bar and restaurant about 90 miles from New Orleans Friday night. 19 year old Chase Harmon died and six others were wounded in that shooting at Scratch Kitchen and Bar. The gunfire erupted in a busy section of downtown where a lot of bars and restaurants were celebrating Cinco de Mayo. This is the sixth shooting in seven days in South Mississippi. Well, the Kentucky Derby is over and we have a winner, but there are a lot of questions revolving around this year's race, and now there are investigations. Authorities at Churchill Downs said two horses competing on the races yesterday sustained crippling leg injuries that forced veterinarians to euthanize the animals. Five other racehorses died in separate incidents since just April 27th, all in the week leading up to the Derby. Churchill Downs says it's working with regulators, and they're trying to conduct swift and thorough investigations. Time now, 840, 75 degrees out. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Earlier, Sarah mentioned that parts of San Antonio experiencing some light rain in the area. 75 degrees at 840. She will have our full forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So it's one of the happiest times of year in San Antonio, and for some it means time to play unrestricted in the streets. Okay, are you a rollerblader, I think you we a both biker, the no. skater, walker? I'm a walker. Okay, Yeah. not even a runner? Not, not now. Oh. I got the Achilles injury. Hey, but you can do any of those things. Oh, look at that. And uh, downtown San Antonio for YMCA Ciclovia, where a mile and a half of the roads are closed for the community to get out in the streets and 
play safely and get active, and that's where we find Alyssa Cole. Hi, good morning, you all. You all mentioned skating. That's so funny. Um, I used to skate a lot with my grandmother. She skated until she was almost 70 years old. So there's no excuse. Everyone watching this, you have to come out and play and have a good time. We did have to get under a tree because it is starting to rain just a little bit. It's a little bit of light rain, but I'm joined by Shannon Gowan of the YMCA of Greater San Antonio. Good morning, Shannon. How you doing? Good morning. Yeah, so, it, you know, a lot of people watching right now, they may be looking out their window, seeing a little bit of a sprinkle. W what's the uh, plan today in case it rains a little bit more? Well, to me, it feels awesome. Um, it was humid yesterday. It's, it was humid this morning. So right now it still feels great. Uh, it is a rain or shine event. So uh, come out and play in the streets with us. Uh, get your rain boots, you know, jump in some puddles. It'll be fun for everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. So we are here at Maverick Park. This is the one of three parks that will be a part of Ciclovia today. We know we have Crockett and Madison, but a lot of people who may want to know what Ciclovia is, could you break it down for us? Yeah. So um, the YMCA has been running this event. It's our 21st event, uh, 11 plus years. Uh, we work with the city of San Antonio to uh, close off the streets, let people play in the streets. They can skate, they can bike, they can walk, whatever. We encourage exercising. We encourage you to get out into your community and um, learn more about uh, some of the vendors that are on site today. Wonderful. And my last question for you, Shannon, um, there's a purpose for this. There's a reason why you all are inviting people out to the community. We know uh, Metropolitan Health with San Antonio was out here giving away free COVID-19 shots, booster shots included, flu shots. Um, you all have a lot of wellness conscious activities and vendors out here. Talk about what the purpose of this is ultimately. Right. So the why is all about mind, body, spirit. Um, so we've got even mental health uh, counseling uh, tent out here. If you need that support um, all around health uh, free group exercise classes we work with the city's diabetes prevention control so there's lots of opportunities for you to learn more about that as well okay Shannon thank you so much for taking out the time to speak with us everyone yes it is a rain or shine event a little rain never hurt anyone especially where you're a kid playing out in the streets right you just want to get outside so consider coming down the event starts at 9 a.m. that's in less than 30 minutes it runs until 2 o'clock several streets will be shut down they are listed on our website. Remember, the parks to visit in Midtown are Maverick, Madison, and Crockett. It is going to be a fun event, and I've already seen a ton of pets, so go ahead and bring Spotted and, uh, you know, the other little guys out and have a good time. We're looking forward to seeing you all. I'm going to send it back to you all in the studio. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Yeah, I want to talk about that light rain that's moving through San Antonio right now. You know, Ciclovia starts at 9, but it goes until 1 p.m. Here's the thing. This light rain that's moving through San Antonio is temporary. It is not going to be a washout today by any means, but we are seeing some light rain starting to spread across the Alamo City. Pretty much everyone around San Antonio is seeing a little light rain. One thing to look out for, though, is that there are a couple of flashes of lightning. So if you hear a rumble of thunder, our saying is when thunder roars, go indoors because thunder can strike uh, lightning can strike far beyond parent storms. And speaking of those storms, uh, you know, San Antonio only expected to get some light rain this morning through about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. But there have been quite a few storms southeast of San Antonio and south of San Antonio near Floresville. Right now we're getting a lot of lightning, heavy rain, perhaps even some very small pea sized hail down near Kennedy as well. And then there's been a lot of rain for Bee County near Beeville. Wouldn't be surprised if we're starting to see some flooding issues out near Beeville and in Bee County. And then right over Victoria and Quero up toward Hallettsville. Look how electrified these storms are. Again, these are moving east away from the San Antonio metro area. But these areas across the coastal plain really are getting a lot of storminess. Let's not forget our friends west of San Antonio as well. And you can see that there was a severe storm in Frio County, pardon me, in Zavala County. It's now fallen apart as it's moved closer to that I-35 area. We're talking more Divine Pearsall. That's where we're seeing some of that more moderate rain. But once again, only in San Antonio, we're going to see light to moderate rain temporarily. 
The rest of the day, our rain chances stand at 20 to 30 percent. So let's go ahead and take a look outside right now in San Antonio. You can see a little glistening on 410 there. Uh, that is because of that light rain that's falling at the airport, 75 degrees. Uh, and as we talk about our weather setup, you know, we've got a really interesting forecast for the next several days. The reason for that is we've got the upper levels of the atmosphere right now, I'm showing you those winds. We've got this southwest flow, and within this southwest flow, we've got little wiggles in the atmosphere. The short waves is what we call them in meteorology. And these short waves are notorious for producing random rain uh, at different times. And so as we head into the week, really we're going to have daily rain chances, but those rain chances are going to be relatively low as far as coverage is concerned. We're talking 20 to 30. 30% rain chances daily because of these short waves. We're not going to have a low pressure system like the one that moved through Dallas, which produces a lot of uh, storminess until potentially next weekend. So weekly weather timeline. Here's what you need to know today when it's going to be cloudy with passing thunder showers for some rain chances. We're going to daily dodge some downpours and humid, very humid. Looking at the future cast for the day today again this afternoon, there's a small 30% chance for an isolated thunder shower. The main area of severe weather will be north of Dallas. Otherwise, it's going to be very humid with high humidity temperatures starting off in the 70s this morning. Let's take a look at that 12 hour forecast 40% coverage of light rain right now, but you can see that those rain chances do go down as we head into the afternoon. It's going to stay cloudy, warm and humid, 88 for the high, and there's going to be a southeast breeze at five to a uh, part of me at 15 miles per hour. Take a look at this forecast. Remember how I said we're going to daily dodge downpours. This is what I'm talking about. Coverage is not going to be that great, but each day there is going to be a small chance for rain at least. OK, so maybe keep an umbrella light jacket in the car with you or in your purse and that case out weather authority app. Absolutely. Got a radar on there and everything. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 852, 70 degrees. All right, we want to give a special shout out to the Valley High Optimist Club. Yeah, the Valley High Optimist Club three times a year awards students from seven different middle schools, four in Northside ISD and three in Southwest ISD for outstanding academic achievement. So congratulations to all the recipients and go get them. We'll be right back. While storms are moving through areas like Floresville and southeast of San Antonio, it's just light rain in San Antonio. In the pollen count today, molds are low and grass is low. Daily chances for light rain over the next few days. Thanks for joining us.